Hello, my name is Adam. In this video, I will talk to you about the cloud, when to use it, how to use it, and have fun with it, and still keep your privacy. Just what is the cloud? The cloud is a computer located somewhere outside your home or sometimes inside your home or office with the necessary networking protocols to store files that normally would be placed on your computer, your tablet or your smartphone. The question is why should I use the cloud? Well there's several reasons for you to do that but one of them is because tablets and telephones have become the most common way people access their files these days. Uh, it's very common that you go home and you need to access a file from work and uh, you go to your telephone or you go to your tablet. They all have a very limited amount of space for storage. So that is one. Another reason is safety. Uh, in case something happens to your tablet, to your telephone, or even your computer, your files are safe somewhere in the cloud. Uh, the cloud servers also keep a backup copy of the stored files, and they're kept virus-free. I never heard of anything happening to anybody's files in the cloud. Uh, also, uh, when you keep them in the when you keep them uh, in the cloud, you can access them through internet virtually 24-7. My favorite reason is because sometimes I've, I have pictures or I have files that I want to share with my friends, co-workers, and I usually send them to my cloud server and uh, they, I can share with them. Another reason is to collaborate. Say you have a file at work that you want to send to a coworker or to your boss and they're not available at the, at the time. So you send them a link from your cloud and they will be able to access those files. Currently, there are a lot of cloud servers in the world. Uh, the most common ones are Google Drive, OneDrive, which is Microsoft's answer to Google Drive, Dropbox, iCloud, Amazon Drive. Of course, there are others, but these are the most common. If you don't have a Google account, I'd strongly recommend you have one. It comes loaded with a lot of services like an office suite, uh, storage space, and... Uh, uh, Picasso for your pictures, there's Google Voice for communication, and uh, Google Plus for everything else. Some people don't like Google Plus, but I'm getting used to it and I guess I like it now. Uh, OneDrive was Microsoft's answer to Google Drive. Uh, the difference is that you get Microsoft Office for free. Uh, Dropbox is the most commonly used. Uh, it is easy to maintain and it works like Google Drive or OneDrive and uh, you can share files with your friends, classmates, co-workers, family members and anyone else with, the in with an internet connection and iCloud and Amazon Cloud are basically media cloud servers uh, where you can store your music, your movies, the books that you buy um, the movies that you rent. Uh, you, if you run a quick search you will find that clouds sprout every day from everywhere. How the hell do you get it back? <clears throat> hey. Holy. <laughs> I just had an idea. Let's film ourselves having sex. That's a great idea. Let me erase that video. I'll erase it, babe. Don't forget, okay? I won't forget. Enjoyed your video. Hello, and welcome to... What the hell is going on? You know the cloud? It went up! It went up to the cloud! You can't get it down from the cloud? Nobody understands the cloud. The cloud, as you can see, is not without its caveats, but if used correctly, no one gets hurt. 
A few suggestions are never share confidential files, pictures, or videos unless you are required to. Share only non-confidential files with family, family and friends. Use a strong password. Never use a date of birth. Check your files for integrity from time to time. Keep a copy of your files on your computer since some cloud services have gone bankrupt and left their customers uh, stranded. Create backup copies only on personal computers, not on tablets, laptops, or telephones since they are prone to breaking and they can be stolen more easily. And use common sense. Now, let's talk about Dropbox. Like every other service, it requires a registration. In this case, it will be a free registration. A paid one will allow you more storage, but it's more suitable for business use. You must go to www.dropbox.com. The page will include a register or a sign-in field, just like the one below. Enter your email address and a password that you will not forget. And the process is very quick. Uh, and for security reasons, uh, it will ask you some personal questions. It will also send an email to the email that you use in order to open the account. And you need to confirm that email in order to uh, have the account with Dropbox. That's all for security reasons. Opening an account with Dropbox is something very simple. Just go to Dropbox.com and when you see this page, uh, that's the opening page for Dropbox.com. You will notice that it is a secure page. If you look on the left hand side, on the top left hand side, you will read HTTPS. S is a secure connection, so you're not uh, you're not mistakenly logging onto something or some fake page. Now, what you need to do is to create an account. So let's create an account. This is my account, but I'm not going to use that now. Um, I'm going to use a brand new. I'm going to create a brand new account. So my first name, last name, and my email address. And I'm going to create a password. and I have to agree to their terms of service. I'm giving them my blood. There you go. I created an account. My browser offers me to remember the password, which I think is very convenient. So I'm going to leave it like that. And I'm going to use a free account. The free account has a lot of space. It's 2 gigabytes or more. It starts at 2 gigabytes, but later they give you so much that you end up with a lot of space, more than you can ever use. Continue then with a basic account. It's going to ask you to install the Dropbox installer. What it does is it creates a folder on your hard drive where all your files are going to be stored for synchronization. I'm going to save it, but I'm not going to use it right now. I'm going to explain how to use it later. The, uh, the problem is that I already have an account and I don't want them to be mixed. All right, so once it is downloaded, it should be all right. Now, I'm going back to Dropbox.com, and right now, I'm not going to create an account. I'm going to sign in with the email account that I uh, opened before. It's going to be this one, and remember, I said that I wanted it to remember my password, so here it is. As I sign in, it's going to give me access to my files. Right now I only have one file which is getting started. It's a default file that is in everybody's Dropbox when they start. Now uploading files to your Dropbox is very simple. All you have to do is go to the top right and you will find three or four, three, three icons. One says upload 
actually four icons. One says open a new folder, the other one is to share a folder, and to delete the files. Okay. Now we're going to use the first icon which is upload a file. I'm going to upload a file that exists on my desktop to my Dropbox. Now the dialog box shows and I have to choose my files. There we go and I'm gonna go to my desktop and I'm going to use the cloud presentation PPTX and I'm going to upload to my Dropbox. It was very simple and the minute it's finished it's done. Now once my files are stored at Dropbox I can share them with some friends and uh, actually anybody I want to. Uh, in order to do that I have to go to Dropbox again, sign on like you've done before and I'm going to go to the file that I want to share. I want to share the cloud presentation with somebody. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the right hand side there is uh, an icon of two links and that means that I'm going to share a link with somebody. When I click it's going to give me a dialog box that asks me for email addresses of the people that I want to share uh, the uh, presentation with. So let me share it with myself. And I'm going to send a message to myself. Hey, look at this. And send. And that's it. So I'm going to receive a link to download that file uh, to my computer or to my other Dropbox if I want to. Or your friends will receive a link to the same file to, for them to download to their computers or to their own Dropbox. Now when we first signed up for Dropbox they offered an installation file. That installation file is supposed to create on your computer a folder and that folder is always synchronized with your cloud Dropbox. So you have a local folder synchronizing with the folder in the cloud. Now, the good thing about it is that if you have a file that you would like to send to Dropbox but you don't want to spend the time doing it because it takes a little while, you just drag and drop it to that local Dropbox folder and that folder will take care of the rest. Now, another reason to use Dropbox or another cloud server is integration. Uh, your smartphone and uh, your tablet are probably equipped with the software that will send uh, your files from your phone or tablet directly to your iCloud, to your Dropbox, to your OneDrive, or any other server that you choose to use in the future. Now, the thing is, uh, you can access those files 24-7 from wherever you are, so that's a big advantage. Now, other important cloud servers, but I haven't mentioned before, are SlideShare, where you can uh, share your PowerPoint presentations, like this one. YouTube is also a, a server for your videos and your pictures or picture slideshows. You can also create your own private cloud. Uh, which is something that I could teach if time allowed, maybe some other time. Well, I hope this presentation has been useful to you and it has helped you use the cloud a little more since it's become so ubiquitous. Um, but if you have a question, don't hesitate contacting me at the email at the bottom of this page. Thank you.